Well, it's the stuff no one wanted to see this week, but even the cool rain can't stop the hot rods and souped up rides in Flint from cruising up and down the bricks. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Colette Boyd in our Saginaw studio. And I'm David Custer in our Flint studio. Back to the bricks is in its third day, and the rain we're seeing in the forecast isn't stopping the rolling crews. Most of the festivities are also going on as planned. Taking you live out right now for a look over the vehicle city, the dark clouds are moving in over the vehicle city, and we're keeping our eye to the sky. Chief Meteorologist Brian Bachman joins us from the First Warn 5 Weather Center for a look at what we can expect. Brian. Thanks very much, David. While it is quiet in the Flint area, as you saw right now, storms are beginning to to fire yet again this afternoon and while nothing is severe at the moment that potential does very much remain on the table so if you are headed out to back to the bricks or any other events this evening or just heading home from work on your uh, typical Thursday evening commute you are going to want to continue to keep a very close eye on the skies around you let's take you out to your first warn five pinpoint Doppler radar live from MBS in 3d we'll start you off with a closer look at the Flint and I 69 areas tonight you can see over the vehicle city storms are staying out of the picture for now but we don't have to look too too far to the north and west to see one storm beginning to cross into the far southwestern corner of Saginaw County. This one's approaching the Chessening area with a solid slug of heavy rain coming down with that as it continues to lift off toward the east northeast. Some other scattered showers that have been moving across the thumb over the last few hours are beginning to work their way out of the picture and out over Lake Huron, but a few stragglers are still in the mix in places like Bad Axe and south of Sandusky. But it's this particular wave of scattered storms that you see starting in our northern areas up around the Rose City and Lupton area almost to the Houghton Lake area and then spanning along US 127 and really all the way southward along the corridor there. Those are the storms that are going to have the highest potential to become strong to potentially severe as we're also working a little bit of sunshine into the equation tonight and that's only going to agitate the atmosphere. So that severe weather threat does remain on the table. The primary risk zone though has shifted a little bit farther to the east. Still very much in play for you folks in the thumb and up to about the I-75 corridor. But I want to stress any storms we see this evening could very much become severe with damaging winds, small hail, and the possibility and all likelihood really of some torrential downpours. And outside of that, it is just a steam bath out there tonight. Low 80s for temps with a substantial jump in the humidity. I'll break down the rest of this storm threat hour by hour coming up in your full forecast. All right, Brian, thank you. As we've said, these car owners aren't letting the potential for a little rain ruin their good time. As TV5 Scott Wolchek is out enjoying the cruise firsthand from inside a sweet ride. How is it going out there, Scott? Hey, David, it's going great out here, especially because I didn't have to pack my umbrella. I mean, we've got some blue skies, a couple clouds out here, but uh, other than that, it's great to be cruising on back to the bricks right down here on Saginaw Street in downtown Flint. I'm here with my car expert, Bobby, and Bobby, you've been to every back to the bricks that you can remember. Tell me a little bit about it. Well. Back to Bricks is a good thing for Flint. We help bring a lot of money in, and uh, we have a lot of fun down here. And I'm glad that uh, we can have uh, Back to Bricks every year. I like coming, and I like driving my car. I like bringing people around or showing people around, and uh, we just have a good time. That is correct. And so this guy was used to work at GM. He's retired now. He's been working with cars his entire life. He brought this car back to life itself. It's a 70 Electra. That's a Buick. What'd you have to do to it, Bobby? I have to redo the engine, uh, the carpet, the electrical, and all the other stuff in the trunk and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So a lot of work that goes into this. A lot of work. A lot of work. So, I mean... Why do, why do you come out here every year? I mean, obviously you love cars, but why? Because I love cars, and I love the people that ask me questions about my car, and uh, I just have a lot of fun. And people enjoy it. You know, Flint is a, is a Buick town, so I just like bring my car out here and show it and have fun. Right. What's, uh, what's the coolest car you've seen out here? My Buick Electric 225. <laughs> Well, modesty, modesty, Bobby. <laughs> but anyways, we're having a blast out here. Reporting live in Flint, Scott Walchek, WNEM, TV5. Back to you, David. Glad he loves his car. Scott, thank you. And we're not done with today's coverage of Back to the Bricks. Stay with TV5 for updates on events throughout our next 90 minutes of news. It's coverage you can count on. We have some breaking news tonight. 13 people are confirmed dead and at least 100 are wounded after a van tore through the midday crowd in Barcelona. 
Now, bodies line the sidewalks of Barcelona's most popular tourist destination. Spanish police are treating it as an act of terrorism. Witnesses say they watched a young man run from the vehicle, and within several hours, police had two suspects under arrest. President Donald Trump tweeted that the U.S. condemns the attack and will do whatever is necessary to help. Police say gang members may be behind a recent series of shootings. They were sent to investigate a reported drive-by shooting Tuesday night on South Catherine Street in Bay City. It's believed the incident may have been retaliation for a similar shooting on Saturday on South Madison. Police believe there was a conflict between two groups, but they don't know what caused the violence. No one was hurt in either shooting. Continuing coverage, you now have a topic we've visited often on TV5 News, opioid abuse and addiction facing our nation. Now, statistics from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention claim that more than 50,000 Americans died in 2015 overdosing on heroin and prescription opioids. Nearly 2,000 of those deaths were right here in Michigan. Chilling statistics, and the problem is only getting worse. But some in Michigan are working hard to reverse that. They're raising their voices and reaching out, hoping to touch and potentially save thousands of lives right here at home. TV5's Ashlyn Hill shares their powerful message. There's a statistic out there that only one in five heroin addicts ever recover. 23-year-old Taylor DeAngelis is that one out of five. Now two years sober, DeAngela speaks out about opioid addiction. She was a guest speaker at Building a Bridge, an opioid summit in Flint. There, she described where her addiction really began. I just kind of fell in with the wrong crowd, the partiers, and um, I started smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol. That turned into every weekend. Um, and then I actually grew a pill addiction in high school. From there, DeAngela says she overdosed on heroin and relapsed two times before finally getting clean. And she's not alone. With a rapid increase in opioid addiction right here in Michigan, Building a Bridge aims to combat those addictions before they can even begin. Rick Page was also a guest speaker at the summit and says education about prevention is one of the most important keys to fighting the opioid epidemic. One of the major problems right now that we have with addiction is the stigma associated with it. Uh, people don't want to talk about it. People don't want to address it. But Page tells me it's the only way to move forward. What most people really don't understand is that addiction, like kidney disease, like heart disease, is a disease. And Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly spoke on the importance of coming together as a community to fight that disease. It's about putting people together, working together in order to make a difference, to get ahead of this, to, to literally save people's lives. Reporting in Genesee County, Ashland Hill, WNEM TV5. Now, if you or someone you know is addicted to heroin or prescription opioids, there is help. You can learn more about what it means to be an addict and how to care for a loved one who abuses the drugs. We have posted a link in the Thursday hot link section of WNEM.com. People remain shocked after last weekend's violence in Charlottesville and the president's response to it. Tonight at 6, local folks shared their perceptions of America's social climate. And a major theft ring busted right here in mid-Michigan. What police found on the property still ahead at 530. But first... A drone operator up to no good. What they were doing and why they could be looking at up to five years in prison. That's next on TV5. You're watching TV5 News at 5, serving Freeland, Pinconning, Mount Morris, and your hometown too. It's coverage you can count on.